Hello, everyone. So I'm Patrick. Um, I'm a long-time academic, but uh, recently left this uh, academia uh, relative safeness and uh, move entrepreneur. I recently moved from France, so sorry for my French, English, and grammatical errors. Um, recently moved from France uh, to San Diego to start this company, Portable Genomics. I thought that with this uh, booming field of genomics here in the US, uh, there were some opportunities to help people, not only physicians, professionals, but also the public, consumers, to have a simple access to their genomics. And so this is what is driven me today. How to uh, make this uh, genomic data uh, simple and accessible to people, and how uh, to accelerate, to speed up uh, the knowledge of uh, our genome to use it in the real life, not just being genomics in a book. So uh, the genome, as uh, Mark just mentioned, <laughs> Uh, this is uh, back in early 2000 when the first human genome sequence was announced. And uh, since that time, uh, genome sequencing technologies have moved forward with revolutions, technically speaking, but also financially speaking. And uh, back in 2010, uh, it had took over 10 years to go from billions of dollars to $100,000 to get your genome test. And back, uh, and then, four years later, now, today, uh, it dropped to $1,000, and this revolution is driven by a company named Illumina, right here in San Diego. So no doubt, uh, genome, your genome, will be a commodity pretty soon. Within two or four years, it will drop to maybe $100, maybe less. But the problem remains, this is a huge amount of data. At the end of the day, this is three gigabytes of data on a hard drive. This is uh, three billions later, A, C, G, Ts, that are the letters of our DNA, and that are organized uh, in over 25,000 genes, and uh, related to over 10,000 disease, with 60 million of genetic markers. And these genetic markers inside your genome are related to inherited traits, condition disease, sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, uh, familial hypercholesterolemia. This is a yes or no answer. On, of, uh, on all of these genetic markers, you also have risk and susceptibilities uh, that are carried by your genes. This is a susceptibility uh, level, and uh, you might be at risk or you might not be at risk for particular disease. Other kind of information in your genome are related to how you metabolize drugs. Do you need a higher dosage for this particular drug or lower dosage? It also uh, indicates you about uh, potential drug adverse effects. So there, uh, there is a lot of information even some really cool uh, information like our traits, the color of your eye, how we are getting bold, <laughs> and, uh, and also uh, about your ancestor. Where were originated your ancestors? So a lot of information and people, consumers, patients, and I like to talk about people, not only uh, patients. I had my genome sequence partially, because I wanted to learn. I was not sick, so we are talking here about genome and people. And people started to get access to this information, but it's still complicated. It's hard to get to the test results. And then people are not uh, wondering uh, what to do with this information in my real life. So this is my goal. I want to make this uh, information simple, uh, easily accessible, and right away understandable. And uh, the plan is to use mobile and uh, to use uh, platform softwares that uh, people are familiar with. And uh, we found um, that the iTunes model was interesting in that sense. So let me give you an example. So this is my iPhone, and I have here with me uh, part of my genome 
on my phone. And you can already see it. You can see red and greens. And I will explain you with this uh, little video here. So this is my regular iPhone, my regular iTunes. I have music albums. So in my iPhone, what I wanted to show you is that I have red and green albums that are related to disease, not to music. It's just a way to represent my genome. And if I click on one album, on the red one, which is related to high risk, the green being related to low risk, the red one is for diabetes type 2. Because of my genetics, I have a higher risk for diabetes type 2. If I click on this album, I have nine genetic markers being reported. If I click on one marker, I have access to information about this uh, genetic marker right away in the regular iTunes. So what I'm suggesting here is that you have your genome uh, data, you have this kind of platform on the mobile when you are going to an MD, just pop up these uh, red and green tags and share this information rapidly with your MD. Simple uh, access to inf uh, information because then, and hopefully the second video here will, uh, will work, uh, it's how to use this information. Here, a patient, she learned she's high risk for breast cancer. So the app is helping her to geolocalize the nearest specialist for breast cancer in her neighborhood. It can geolocalize doctors, pharmacy, wellness providers related to her breast cancer risk. But it also can, and the video has stopped, uh, unfortunately, it also can uh, start reminders. This patient is high risk for breast cancer, so let's remind her she needs a mammography every three or six months. And what else is better than reminding us uh, this kind of appointment? The mobile, you still have a mobile. So the mobile is engaging right now as soon as information being actionable from our genome, the mobile will help people to engage into a new medicine, preventive medicine. Let's forget about curative medicine and let's try to reduce the cost of healthcare. But uh, genomics is really into its infancy. Uh, the relationships between our genome and our condition because I have these genetic markers, I am at risk for this particular disease, all of these relationships is, remains to be discovered. Uh, it remains to, uh, to be validated by the medical field. So here, what I'm saying is that we need more people with genome sequence, and we need these people to start aggregating with their genome, their biological data, their behaviors, and you probably, most of you, have a tracker in your pocket, like I do, and uh, also uh, uh, aggregating to your genome uh, information, your lifestyle, and then let's mine, explore the data. So here, the genomic space is moving to the big data space. But would you like to share your genome, like you share your information, with Google and with Facebook? Probably not. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is a big chaos, honestly, in this big data space. Uh, when it comes to your data, do you know where are your data? Do you know who owns your data? And when those billions of dollars uh, big data company are monetizing your data, do you get any penny from that? So there is a revolution to start. And I think uh, because of this uh, new kind of big data like our genome, we need to find new models. We need uh, people to share, but we need to incentivize people to share their data. So the future that I am, say, uh, I am seeing is that you will be the unique owner of your data. You will store your data on your personal devices, on your personal cloud, encrypt. And then when you will go to the doctor, he will need access to your data. Okay, that's fine. I'm sharing the data you need. If you want to share your data with academics to accelerate the discovery, uh, it's fine. Let's share selected set of data for particular projects. 
And ultimately, if you want to share your data, like your genome, like your lifestyle data with the industry, let's do it for a fee. Yeah. They will have to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what we are doing at Portable Genomics. Uh, we want to accelerate not only the, uh, the access uh, of uh, your genomic information through very cool uh, interfaces, but uh, we want to accelerate the discovery uh, of correlation between your genome and your conditions. So let's do it with an infrastructure that will preserve your ownership and your privacy. Let's invent a fair trade data sharing and monetization system where we can uh, use the power of crowdsourcing to accelerate the discovery and use at the end of the day really our genome information. Thank you.